Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all doing wonderful. I'm sorry for not being a little bit consistent as I promised in my last video. It's just my work took completely over me since I finished my uh, last placement. I had so many shifts. We had a lot of people calling sick and because of work casual, I was trying to cover those, you know. And now we have school holidays as well, which means my kids are at home and at the moment they're watching cartoons on Netflix upstairs. So giving me a little bit of time and silence to record for you this video so this video oh my god guys you ask me so many questions regarding studies regarding loans regarding repayments regarding lengths of studies which one should I choose EN or RN or AN you know who I will become what I will be doing in the end and stuff like that I tried to answer all of those questions in the comment sections under different videos depending where you ask those questions but I thought okay not many people actually go and read the comments so I thought okay I'm going to just make one general video putting all these questions into this sort of video again <laughs> and make it easier for you to watch so that if you watch it all it will be all in one place you know and i try to cover as much as i can and explain to you from my perspective and from what i know from what i've experienced myself through my studies and yeah hopefully it will become useful for you okay the first question that you ask most of the time is which one should i choose rn or ian and Okay, guys, this is two completely different degrees, okay? Your EN is this when you go to study your diploma of federal nursing. This could be private organization or private education provider, or it could be a type. Type is the most popular one. Now, I've seen in my state some of the unis actually offer you diploma of federal nursing through them, and then they will sort of like give you some sort of like credits, you know, or ways to take a pathway to study RN if you want in their uni. So you do the EN there and then you continue to RN if you want to. Okay, I've done my one at TIFE of Queensland if you are first time now on my channel. So I finished it last year and I've done it at local TIFE and I've done it full time. So this is regarding diploma of EN and it goes for 18 months full time or three years for part time. At uni, that's your already bachelor. This is not diploma. This is bachelor and it goes for three years full time. You can do six years part time <clears throat> if you wish to. Okay, so uh, when you look at these two professions, I haven't been worked as RN yet. I'm a current student. I am now in my second year of uh, my Bachelor of uh, Nursing Science to become RN. So I'm not working in a field now as RN. But from what I can compare from my um, clinical placements, RNs, they have more responsibilities, they do more clinical tasks, and this sort of profession goes into sort of like a management side. Whereas ENs, they still do a lot of clinicals too, but they have a little bit less responsibilities and they work under supervision of RN. So RN is above EN. So if you have any um, concerns, if you need to report certain conditions of your patients, the first person, person you would be talking to, your RN and then doctors and so on and so on. Okay, so of course your salary will be different as well. You know, with ENs, they have certain salary wages. I'm not gonna go there now because you can check all of that online. It depends where you work. Metro North, for example, gives you one salaries. Queensland Health will give you different salaries. If you work in HK, again, you will have different wages or salaries. So it's going to be always different, okay? Um, RN, when you start to work as RN, every year of your experience, you will have a chance to be having more salary increase. So the more you work in the industry, the more your salary will go up, which is really good. Then you can uh, up boost it by maybe doing some advanced diplomas, you know, or some other master's degrees and stuff like that, you know, and if you wanna go a little bit to different fields in nursing and stuff like that, depends who you want to become in the future, you know, along with the way when you start to work in the interest to learn new things, you know, and maybe having different interests and stuff like that. So those are two different courses. Now, regarding the prices, some of you asked me, okay, if I go to do EN and then I will do RN, how much it will cost me? Maybe should I do RN right away and it will be cheaper for me, you know? 
Yes, definitely. Look, if you go to do your EN, okay, the cost currently cost of um, 21,645,000, okay? So this is the current price of diploma of EN here in Queensland. I'm, I'm going to be talking only about Queensland because this is where I live. And if you wanna check other states, you can go to uh, type online and just type diploma of general nursing or diploma of nursing and it will give you prices of different states as well. So for Queensland, it's 21,645. All the links of the information that I will be providing you today about will be linked in the description box below. Okay, so that's diploma. For uni, you will be paying roughly between 7,000 to 8,000 and few hundreds, depending on a uni, okay? And depending how many um, units you have per year, okay? So if you Google, for example, Bachelor of Nursing, you will find that the brackets, you know, numbers or the price for the whole bachelor will vary from 20, 22,000 up to 30 or even 35, depending on the uni and depending on which state you are living and studying in, okay? In my uni, I pay roughly around 7,500, 600, a bit more sometimes per year, depending, depending again how many units and um, probably workshops or whatever is in the program I have during a particular semester, you know, throughout the year. So that's the prices. So now the question is, if you go to do your diploma of enrolled nursing and then go to uni, you will basically have a credit for certain amount of units. In the unit that I study in, it's Sunshine Coast University, I've got eight credits which means for eight subjects. So I didn't need to do first year at all. I took a pathway from Diploma of Enroll Nursing to uni second year right away. So now I personally paid for my diploma at that time. It was 21,000, I think 200, 65 or something it was when I started almost two years ago okay and then when I moved now to uni so I'm paying now as I said between 7,005 or 600 per year so if you calculate I have two years let's let's take it like 8,000 roughly yeah per year so that would be 16,000 so I have my 21 plus 16 okay so this is how much I owe now to the government to pay once I finish all my studies or if my income reaches certain amount per year, which I will talk now in details a bit further in this video. Okay, so that's the numbers that we have for these studies. Obviously, if you're thinking by this way, okay, well, it's too expensive if I do two courses, okay, plus you will have by half a year more time to study because your full-time diploma is 18 months plus two years of uni, you know, just makes it all together by half a year more. Whereas if you would go to uni right from the start, you will only have three years, not three and a half, you know, if you calculate diploma and uni together. So here it comes two factors, more of a paying a little bit or depending on what type of um, loan you took, you know, were you subsidized or on concession, which I will talk now in a minute as well to explain what that is, okay, and plus you will be over with time. So if you know who you want to become, if you want to become RN, go to uni, if you want to become Ian, go to TAIFE or to any course that providing for your diploma of enrolled nursing. Okay, I had a lot of students in my class at TIFE who were working as carers or AANs in hospitals for quite a long time and they realized that they want to become EANs. For the, for, so for them it was optimal choice to go actually and do their diploma of enrolled nursing because they knew 100% what they exactly wanted. They knew where they're going to be. They wanted to be EANs, you know. For those who see themselves as RN, they can do straight away uni, you know, you don't have to do any of additional courses. Now you probably have a question, Jana, why did you go to do your EN, why not RN? Okay, 
I moved here from Queensland. I, I moved to Queensland from New South Wales. Now it would be roughly two years and a half, or maybe almost three years. Okay, when I moved here from New South Wales, I knew I wanted to study my nursing already back then. My partner at that time, he was moving here for work, okay, and Mia was just moving with him. But I wanted to do my nursing and at that time, just before moving, I just got my citizenship as well. So like a year before it or something like that, okay. So I was a permanent resident before that and then I've got my citizenship here. So when I moved here, I knew that the first thing I want to do, I want to study, okay? But at that time, I didn't know much about the whole process here in Queensland because in New South Wales, it was a little bit different. Here we have QTAC that you have to apply through when you go to unis, they have certain dates for enrollments, you know, and taking applications and stuff. Like, I didn't know any of that. And... I only knew that I needed to do my IELTS if I go to uni and back then, two years and a half, I didn't, I didn't need to do IELTS for TIFE, which now is compulsory, they've changed it now. So for uni I needed to do my IELTS, which was academic IELTS and for TIFE, no. And I thought to myself, okay, I'm going to just submit the application with QTAC, you know, and my final goal, I always knew I want to become RN, you know. I didn't want to be EN, I wanted to become RN and then further on even advance my career to maybe do masters, you know, after working maybe for three years in the industry, you know, and do my masters, maybe go to do um, nursing practitioner later on and stuff like that. So I always knew I wanted to go further than just EN. So I've done my application to, through QTAC, you know, and I remember that I had only three weeks available for me before the rounding dates would be over, like for taking application through QTAC uh, for that coming semester to do my bachelor. You know, I thought, oh, okay, I'll be in time, I'll be in time. Anyways, so uh, I needed to do my IELTS, you know, and I needed to translate my documents and stuff, you know, and stuff like that. And you know what? I didn't have time to do that. Those three weeks just passed just like that. I didn't have enough time to complete all of that. My 71 or $79 that I paid for application was just thrown on the ground, you know, and in the end I was late with uni, I couldn't enroll anymore, so they told me, okay, you have to actually uh, try yourself for the next semester, and you have to then uh, obviously pay again for application, so I thought to myself, nah, that's okay, like, then I read online, you can do TIFE, and then you can take a pathway to to uni, you know, to the second year, so I thought to myself, yeah, how about that? I called TIFE, you know, and I explained to them that I would like to study and stuff and they told me you can come to the campus and actually do all paperwork through us face to face, you don't have to do it through QTAC, we still have enrollment going on, you know, and dates are open and stuff and I was like, oh great, that sounds good. I, I was really like, I really wanted to study, <laughs> I didn't want to wait another half a year, you know, to, to go to uni, I thought, okay, I will take a pathway, I will study like longer by six months, it's okay not a big deal you know and then I spoke to some of my friends who were doing ENs as well and they said to me look like if you do TIFE it's a lot of uh, placements for you a lot of clinicals when you be moved to uni to second year you will have already almost 400 hours of clinical placements experience you know you will know what you're doing you know you will be comfortable with patients you know and things like that you know and that would be advantage for you you know and then you can continue working as Ian and study as RN I thought yeah that sounds good anyway so I went to type I've done all my documents through them face to face face on a campus you know and I've enrolled myself to Ian's Okay, now you're probably thinking, okay, Jana, you said that, okay, the time is longer if you do EN by six months, what about the money? Okay, let's talk now about how much can you pay. So the general, general price that you can see online is 21,645 currently, and now we're talking 2020, year 2020. If you watch this video after a year time, it might be different price again, because they have in the terms and conditions that they can change prices anytime they want. So this is the current price now. Back then it was 21,200 something, okay? This is how much I needed to pay, but there is options for you to pay less and I will explain you how. They have options something called subsidized 
and something called concession, okay? Subsidized, it's when you can take a vet loan that can pay for you out of this 21,600 whatever, 15,793 currently. This is the price that the government can pay for you as a loan and then you have to repay it back. So if you minus this amount from 21, you will be living around 5,000 because it's 21, 645 minus 15,793 so it would be roughly about like four and a half or five thousand okay and this is how much you will pay from your pocket then here is the catch as well if you are new start allowance payment on Centrelink or you are a job seeker you know or just like you're not working at the moment and you're getting um, a payment or you may be a mom of caring of the kids, you know, I think it's called, uh, how do they call it here in Australia? Like if you, if you mom alone raising kids, like you having parent, parental payment or something like this, I don't remember the name for it. Anyway, as long as you don't have any income and you're receiving payment from Centrelink here in Australia, you can apply through this concession, okay? So then you don't have to pay that gap of, let's say, 4,500 or 5,000 from your pocket, okay? So this is what I've done. When I moved here, obviously, my partner, he was working, but I was not working, okay? So I put myself on, I think I was on New Start Allowance or something like that, you know? And um, when I applied uh, to study my diploma of enrolled nursing, okay, I done through subsidized payment and then through concession as well. You can find all this information through the links that I will provide in the um, description box below. And uh, so that gap was paid for me by the government, okay? And the only little difference I needed to pay, I don't remember what was the name for it, but I needed to pay something like a small difference from my pocket, which was six or seven hundred dollars. And I needed to pay it through each semester. So they broke it to me into three halves. So it was like about 160. I remember first semester I paid 160 and then around 170 for second semester. And then third semester, I didn't need to pay at all because uh, midway or the beginning of our second semester of my diploma of enrolled nursing, the price for a uh, diploma went down and they've done the recalculations for us and we didn't need to pay like for full amount. So my, my price even went down and then that last portion of the money that I needed to pay in my last semester from this seven or six hundred dollars okay I didn't need to pay so it was like 250 or 200 I didn't need to pay so I basically paid from my pocket like about four hundred dollars okay everything else was covered for me so if you are not working and you're on a payment from Centrelink you can use it as your advantage like in a good way because this will help you to not pay that gap from your pocket you know and still do your dream and study nursing you know and become a great nurse in the future so yeah obviously you will need to pay this money back once you start in earning income so now i'm owing for my diploma Last time I've checked through my ITO, and you can find it through your ITO online, the taxation office, I was owing $12,200 or $300. This is how much it cost me for my diploma of enrolled nursing out of $21,000. is not it great? Yes. So um, now I will have my uni about 7,500 or so per year. So let's say it's 15. So 15 plus 12, it's like 27,000, 27, okay? So it's not really, really bad. Of course, it's cheaper if you go to do your RN right away, okay, from uni. But here where you ask me questions, guys, you ask me, how can I work as EN while I'm doing my RN degree? You can't unless you finished your EN diploma before, because when you do your RN degree, okay, you can only work as an AAN or carer. And they will tell you this. 
When you finish, if you started your bachelor from the beginning, after the completion of your first year, you will have your first clinical placement in the end, which is your aged care facility clinical placement. It wouldn't be like a clinical placement, it would be just a placement because it's not really clinical. It's aged care field, sort of. So once you finish that, uni will tell you, now you can apply for jobs as AAN or a carer. You know, if you want to work in aged care or AAN if you want to work in hospital uh, settings. Okay, and you don't need any like certificates or anything for that. You know, at, and TIFE used to tell us the same thing. Once we've done our first aged care placement in the end of the first semester, not in the end of the first year, in the end of, with, see with TIFE, your course is three semesters, right? So you will have your aged care placement in the end of the first semester. With, with uni, you will have it in the end of the year. Okay, so you have to like complete the whole year. So with EN, you can work actually as AN faster a little bit. So yeah, so it was the same for TIFE and for uni was the same. And your uni will tell you, okay, now you can work as AAN or as a uh, carer. We can help you with tips of writing your resume. You can use your facilitator as a reference, you know, and blah, blah, blah. And then you can go and apply even in aged care where you had your placement, apply if they need any workers, you know, they can employ you and you can start working and studying, okay? Now, if you do your bachelor, you can't do EN. You can do AAN. Or carer but not Ian. Why not Ian? Because through this degree, you know, in Australia to work as Ian or RN, you need registration. Work as AAN, you don't need registration, okay? So if you are still in the process of completing your bachelor, through midway, you know, you won't get any document certifying you to work as Ian and get your registration from APRA. You, you can't do it, you know what I mean? So you have to wait until you complete the whole course, the whole degree, and then work already as RN, not even EN, because that's your final goal, like you wanted to do RN, that's why you went to uni, so you will be looking for jobs or post-grad programs, you know, to put your foot into the hospitals, you know, or any other healthcare care, um, facilities to work as RN, okay? but. For me, in my case, if I finished my TIFE Diploma of Enrolled Nursing, I can work already as AAN from the first semester, then finish the course, get my registration, start working as EN, and take my pathway to uni, to second year, study my RN, and still continue working as, RN, as EN. Because I already have my diploma in hands, I can apply through APRA, you know, for my registration, you know, and... That's it, I can work. So that's the only difference, okay? So if you're looking for something like that, you will be a little bit overpaying with money and you will end up studying half year more if you wanna do this way. Like for me now, because I've done it already this way, I can say to you that I'm happy that I've done my diploma of enrolled nursing. It was a beautiful, beautiful course. I had beautiful teachers, you know, I had wonderful placements. Oh boy, I miss my placements so much. I was lucky to go into such a good hospitals, into such a good wards, where I've learned so much. Now, like I look at myself now and back then, when I just even went to my first placement to do in aged care, I was literally afraid to talk to people, to colleagues, to patients, to their parents oh boy like i didn't want to talk to their parents like i was terrified <laughs> i didn't know what to say i was afraid i would say something wrong you know i sometimes they just approach you like of course you can direct them to the you know um to the nurses and stuff like that you know but at the same time you need to practice as well you know we have one of the standards for enrolled nursing and registered nursing is uh, educating your patients if you don't practice how can you feel comfortable about it you know what i mean like you have to learn how to approach people how to talk to people you know fight that fear inside of you you know so you could look professional and comfortable and calm especially when they are not calm you know <laughs> so yeah so i can say now that doing my diploma actually gave me so much of potential and gave me so much of um, experience, you know, and opportunities to learn and feel comfortable now when I'm dealing with my patients, you know, when I'm dealing with other nurses, when I'm dealing with doctors, because you as a nurse, you have to talk to doctors a lot of time. You have to call them, you have, you have to speak to them in person, you know, you have to talk to the pharmacies, you know, when you need to reorder medications and stuff. So you need to know how to do the medications, you know, you need to know how to do documentation as well. So yeah, so now like when I go on my placements now, while I'm doing my RN, I feel more comfortable now in hospital.
hospitals, you know, I'm not afraid that, oh, I've never been in this world, you know, what is going to be like, you know, I feel more comfortable. Like, of course, there is a little bit of fear when you do any placement, you know, because there is, you don't know what you expect, but it's not like you're really, really scared as you were in the beginning, you know what I mean? So, yeah. So, for me, I'm really happy. Now, I came to the second year of my Bachelor of Nursing Science with 400 clinical placement hours behind my shoulders, you know, and I even feel more com confident and comfortable in labs when we practice, you know, clinical skills and tasks in labs, you know, so yeah, like, and you know what, believe it or not, but most of my class in my semester one, most of it was the girls, were the girls that have done their ENs and they came from different types. Like I was so surprised. Like I only had about four or five students who came um, directly from high school doing their Bachelor of Nursing right from the beginning. But all the other people, I had them completing their ENs, you know, and moving to the second year. So I was like, I was so pleasantly surprised. I was not the only one. Actually, a lot of people do ENs, you know, and uh, yeah, and then moved to do RNs. So there you go guys i hope I, I answered all the questions regarding this matter you know so let's move on to the second one you keep asking me english test oh guys look i hate this test to be honest i'll tell you honestly and i don't like to use even word hate but i do hate this test i think ielts is a way of just sucking money out of students okay and if any ielts representatives watching my videos you know Please don't get upset at me, but really guys, like many few, very few people actually pass IELTS from the first time. You can, most of the people need to do it second or third time, either to uh, be eligible to enter a certain education providers or to get a registration. And this is the fact, okay? And what makes the matter even worse is that the cost of this test is so high. When I've done it first time, it was $350. $40. Now it went, I think, I've heard people said it went to $375 or something like that. But don't quote me 100% on that, you can check it yourself, but this is what I've heard people said. So this is like, this is so expensive, really. So if you're looking at failing first time, if you fail first time, you know, you have to pay double amount of all of that because you have to book another one and pay again, you know, so yeah, it's really expensive. And also like the time that they strict this test with it's like each well apart from speaking but each other part is so strict with time especially writing that literally like you're writing so quick you know and can you imagine like any test it's like an exam right and here knowing that this test is so important for you because it depends if you pass this test, it depends whether you will get a registration or whether you will enter certain uni, you know, you feel so anxious and so nervous when you go to do it, you know, and also the time that they put, you know, the brackets of this time make you even more anxious, you know, because, you know, like you have to think quick, you have to write quick, you know, and on the top of that, you feel stressed as well. And you have to do all of that in such a pressure, you know, which is making the situation even worse. You know what I mean? If they would give you a little bit more time, I think it would be more fair, but I don't think it will happen. Yeah. I remember when I've done my writing part, literally like just, I put the pen on a table, like the time was over and I was like, phew, <laughs> that was close. So yeah, so a lot of you asking me about this test. Yeah, so yeah, look guys, you have to do it now. Apparently in my state, you have to do it for type and you have to do it for uni. It's been always for unis. As far as I remember myself researching for nursing, it's been always there for unis, but it, it never been for type until certain like times. And I think different states change the time for IELTS for type differently. You know, like it appeared in Queensland about a year ago. I remember I was in my second semester of my diploma of enrolled nursing. And this is when they put IELTS as a mandatory test uh, for those who don't have English background. So yeah, so you guys have to do, you have to do this test, unfortunately. You can do uh, this test or anything equivalent to it, okay? And uh, I think they put it now seven, Point zero overall and not less than 6.5 on each category yeah okay so that's regarding that those questions now regarding uh the repayments okay so how can you repay look at type you will have this vet 
the student loan okay and at uni you will have hex loan okay both of these loans they are interest free which is great okay so it's not like you bought a car and in a time of five years repayment instead of paying fifteen thousand you're overpaying 20. it's not going to happen here so um australian government is actually very fair about that and this is something i like and in general i like the fact that australian government is actually giving us these opportunities to take a loan and uh study i think the amount maximum amount of the loan last time i've checked was ninety thousand per person so you can divide this this money into whatever courses you want to do and then after that you have to pay already from your pocket if you exceeded it but ninety thousand oh boy wow it's a lot i mean like it's great what can you wish for more really it's it's wonderful so yeah so when can you repay when I started my diploma, the amount for repayment, not the amount for repayment, that your income threshold, threshold, whatever you call it, was 51 or 52,000 per year. So once you start to earn that amount of money, this is when your taxation office or IT or whatever, they can start to withdraw a certain percentage from your income or from your salary or wages, whether you earning it per week or per fortnight, you know, back to the government, okay? You can check in ITO how much you owe for your studies. So every time in a uni, for example, when you complete a new year, you will have it on your student database. For diploma, a type, I have it now, full price on in my ITO when I log in on the government website, you know, to check my taxation and stuff, I can see it there. I don't have my uni showing there yet. I think it will work by when you finish the whole course, then the whole sum of money will go in there. So at the moment now, I'm repaying as far as I know my type so far, not my uni yet, because I literally like studied only one semester maybe they will hook me up soon and i will be repaying back as well you need to get up because how they calculated for you any type of loans you took is going to be as one general sum of money that you have to repay it doesn't matter was it hacks or vet fee help you know and stuff like that there is a general amount of money altogether there that you have to repay back okay so yeah so now so far i'm paying back my type okay so um so that was back then it was about roughly 52,000 now they've changed it to i will tell you quickly i had this open but again the link for it is going to be in the description box below okay and there you can actually see how the government changes every year if they change it okay so now in um, 2000 between 2019 and 20 the compulsory repayment threshold was 45881 so they lower it actually lower so now if you're earning about that amount per year you're eligible already to be repaying your loan back now the compulsory repayment threshold for 2021 year is going to be 46 1620 so they're going to increase it a little bit higher look the higher the amount is better for you because the average income here in australia would be i would say like 40 45 you know 50 you know so now currently at this year it's 45 you know so now average income basically like they just i, I assume they just want people to start to repay it quicker you know according to the average income and also because we had all this loss of jobs for a lot of people or reduction in hours you know just obviously nobody were earning the money that they used to earn before so it was no payments going back again to the government so yes so this is the current amount now how much you will be paying back so here in the website that i'm going to link for you in the description box below it actually tells you the threshold how much you earn and then the payment rate i usually pay um they take from me about three to three and a half four percent okay every fortnight okay but again it depends because i work as casual it depends how many shifts i do per week or per two weeks i get my payment every fortnight 
okay so it depends how many shifts i do so i usually do like about four or five shifts per week so it's like 10 or, or 11 so that's do 12 you know if i'm having a lot of free time you know no studies no assessments i can do more and sort of like save up on the money for the times when i have my placements you know or whatever happens in life if i got sick or something like that so yeah so they tell you like for example if you're earning below 45 1881 you will pay zero if you earn from 45 to 52,000 you pay one percent out of of this amount if you earn between 52 900 blah 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 till five till 56 100 whatever and then you pay two percent and so on and so on okay so it's not really much that the government take from you like i can honestly tell you it's not like is going to be taking half of your salary or something. No, you can still enjoy your life, you know, and you can still have other loans, but just keep in mind, and they tell you as well, when you apply for any loan, whether it's for education or whatever, that depending on how much you owe to the government, how many of courses you've done in your life, you know, and stuff like that, it may affect your ability or the amount of the money that you want to borrow from the government for other types of loans like for example buying a new car you know or buying um let's say a house you know and things like that so just keep that in mind you know but in general like i don't have any other loans in my life like my car is fully paid out you know i rent i don't have my own property so I, the only loan like loan i have which is my study loan and i can tell you that it's very comfortable but the percentage amount that they withdraw it from your salary or from your wages is pretty enough for you to have a comfortable life you know you can still buy clothes you can still travel you can still have food you know and stuff like that so yeah this is why i love again australian government because they're fair in this sort of aspect so yeah i think i've answered pretty much most of the questions that you guys ask me okay uh, regarding this matters that i've discussed here doesn't make sense does it make sense what i just said <laughs> oh god i think i'm just getting tired oh yes one more question you guys ask me um who can get the loan okay guys if you are a permanent resident you can still get the loan actually if you go to TIFE and search for diploma of federal nursing or if you go to uni website for bachelor of nursing science you know course you can actually see in a section where the <clears throat> loans explained and how to apply for it and who are eligible and stuff like this you can see that uh pr or permanent residence you know and also uh people who already have a citizenship here in australia both of them can have actually loans so yeah so don't be afraid if you pr you can still have a loan and uh yeah again how fair it is isn't it everybody can study everybody can pursue their dreams you know and have equal opportunities which is great this is another thing why i love australian government because yeah i think it's great so if you have more questions feel free to leave them in this video you know i mean like in the comment section under this video because it will be easy for me to locate them as well and so other people could read it but uh yeah so i hope i answered all of them and this video will be somehow beneficial for you as my other videos for now i'll see you in my next videos bye hey guys so i decided to add this small piece into the end of this video because um i've got a few more questions asked by you guys today and because i was about to finish editing my uh video that i filmed today i thought okay i'll just include this parts you know in the end as well so that it could stay all in one video as i wanted it before okay so excuse my pajamas it's like almost 10 o'clock at night and i'm sitting in front of my computer because i have my qtech application open so i could tell you more on the documents that i've been submitting for the bachelor of nursing science and so the question was what type of documents do you need to submit if you want to do bachelor of nursing okay so for me from my own experience because i live in queensland we have qtech here which is the middle person for you to help you to enroll into universities or TIFE even uh, they asked me to submit my bachelor of uh, economics or management in economics from my home country they wanted it for me to translate it and submit it in original language and also as a translation as well so I've done translation through uh, native tr translators here in Queensland and it's um, those type of translators that are, they are um, qualified or authorized by the government 
so they can actually translate all your important sort of documents that you can submit to places like QTAC, you know, for your enrollments to the unis and stuff like that. So I've done that translation and then I've submitted my original and also my translation. I don't know if in QTAC they have people who can read and understand different language. I don't know why exactly they ask for original because when you contact native translators you will give them your original certificate or diploma or whatever document it is you know and they can see that it's official document and then they have to translate upon that so they won't do any like false information you know so i don't know either way um i've submitted the two as they asked me and then Second thing they asked me um, to submit my uh, high school certificate uh, as a proof that I finished it and they wanted to see the transcript as well from all the subjects. The same as with my bachelor, they wanted to see the transcript as, as well, to see my grades, to see what type of subjects I've done, you know, and stuff like that. So the same they wanted to see with my high school. But I couldn't do my high school and explain to them why, because I left my home country in 2005. That was way long time ago you know and I've been living in different countries since then and then I ended up in Australia and um, like I only had my bachelor with me and really I was lucky just to take it just I thought okay if any time we'll be working overseas you know probably will need it but I never thought that my high school certificate will be required as well somewhere so <laughs> like I don't have it I did not have time for my family to, con to contact them and send it to me and then translate it as well so I was like guys Look, I can't send it, you know, but I think the reason why they wanted to wanted to see if I've done subjects like biology, chemistry, physics, you know, maths, and of course I've done all of that because this is one of the mandatory subjects in my country, you know, when you study um, through your school. So, yeah. So I went away with that. It was all right. I didn't send it to them and they were okay with that. Then I've added a few more certificates that I've done here in Australia, which is not related anyhow to nursing. They were completely in different fields to help me to work in the office before, you know, and stuff like that. And uh, yeah, so that was it. So that's the documentations that I needed to submit. You may have a little bit different requirements though, because I live in Queensland. So he, this is how we have it, you know, and this is what they needed for my Bachelor of Nursing. You know, if you are in different state in Australia it could be different a little bit maybe different documents but in general they need your bachelor's or diplomas if you've done any before to just give you that rank you know to be uh, eligible to to be enrolled to the uni because each uni have a certain like a passing rank you know my one I needed how much was it I think it was 89 or 84 something some unis have 90 91 my bachelor of nursing or sorry my bachelor of economics gave me 94 points or score of 94 which was like top of my head it was too much even so I was really happy about that so yeah but each uni have has different score okay so you have to check it with QTAC you have to go to each union have a look you know what's the passing score um so yeah so that's the documents that i wanted to mention so um yeah sorry about tuning in like that in the end but uh if this information was helpful um yeah i'm happy if it was anyways i'll see you next time bye